Hello and welcome. Season 2 of DuPont Presents Power of Shunya Challenge for Zero is sort of nearing the end of this journey. And what a journey it's been. 16 teams of innovators from around the country. Teams, that's right. We've got one half tech, one half management. It's not just about what you think of as a solution. It's also about getting the solution out to people, about executing it, about getting to Shunya. The Shunya we talk about, of course, is zero of all that is wrong around us. Bring it down to zero. Destroy it if you can. Crush it if you can. While we're talking about destroying and crushing, just a nice segue into introducing my judges. I'm just kidding. They're really nice. They're not doing anything of the sort. Please welcome our panel of judges. Uh, of course, the Regional Technology Director of Asia Pacific DuPont, Dr. Homi Bedwar. Homi, you know I'm kidding. You're not crushing any dreams here. I'm not crushing, but uh, who knows? We'll have to see what, uh, what they bring out. It's not just Homi they have to impress. They also have to impress the CMD of Karma Venture Services, Ms. Nandini Vedinathan. Nandini, how are you? Good. How are you? We also have our third judge, who I call Mr. Tough Love. <laughs> he is uh, the founder and CEO of Milagro Business and Knowledge Solution, Mr. Rajiv Karwal. Rajiv, I, I think that's a fair title for you. You're Mr. Tough Love. Is it? <laughs> yes, you are. I think it's because you work with robots all the time. <laughs> is that the reason? No, but uh, you know, I, to tell you very frankly, you know, humans can't be robots, but yep. robots can be almost human. You know, and that's too. where the technology is uh, heading for. I will agree with Rajiv because if I don't, he's going to replace me with a robot. <laughs> so I will just quickly move this side and introduce our first team. Please welcome them with a big round of applause, audience, if you could. From VIT University, Velour, Devlina Das, and from the Shailesh J. Mehta School of Management, IIT Mumbai, Pushkin Kasat. <laughs> Devlina and Pushkin, how are you? Great. Good. Let's have a look at what they're presenting. I have been here in Valor for the past eight years. I think government has invested uh, many crores just to pump out water and make it reachable to the people of Valor as a portable water. Yet, there is a serious problem arising from the quality of the water which is available. So just not the water is scarce, but also it is extremely polluted for the people. Uh, there are new generation purifiers available today. Maybe they are very cost effective, but that's not enough. Uh, they may not be able to deal with the uh, polluted level and a wide spectrum of pollutants that contaminate the water in Velour. Zeta uh, is actually a zinc oxide nanoparticle which has been modified by an amine. I would enlist the major features of Zeta. For example, it's a uh, marvelous ability to remove the various anionic ligands, anionic moieties, heavy metal removal, removal of dyes and pesticides, all the chemicals. Apart from that, it is highly flexible. For example, we have worked out with three different varieties of Zeta, powder form, the membrane form, and the chitosan bit form. Apart from that, we can merge Zeta with the already existing low-cost conventional technology, uh, most likely activated carbon, which is neither harmful for the environment and nor it has any disposability issues. So these qualities make Zeta a perfect package to be used in a purifier in itself. So that's how I feel Zeta can definitely possess the power of Shunya and this Zeta can be a very big zero for India in the future to improve 10 times wherever it gets applied to. It's an interesting area that you've picked because they do say that future wars may be fought over water. So that's something that I'm sure that's close to everybody's hearts, people who are over here. And I'm sure the judges have a lot of questions about the science of it. But uh, Pushkin, I'm going to come to you, comrade, if I could. 90 seconds is what you have. You have to impress us with your plan, reaching out to market, the commercial viability, all those things. 90 seconds. Are you ready? Absolutely. You look ready, my friend. Very good. Looking forward to this. Your 90 seconds start now. Penetration of water purifiers in Indian homes today is just about 5%. Less than 26% of domestic wastewater is treated in India today. Zeta is the opportunity to fill this gap with a solution 
which provides a degree of purification equal to that of existing methods while having additional advantages like much lower cost, no water wastage, and higher pollutant targeting. We plan to target two of the most lucrative sections, segments, one being the domestic purifier segment expected to grow at a CAGR of 25% and one being the wastewater treatment segment expected to grow at a CAGR of 18% till 2018. The distribution model will essentially be a B2B model where we, where we manufacture the cartridges and sell to companies who install these cartridges in the final product and sell it to the end consumer. In terms of financials, the price of our cartridges will be at least one-fourth of, of that available in the market today for domestic purposes and one-tenth that available in the market today for industrial purposes. Incorporating Shunya, Zeta is the ultimate solution for Shunya impurities, Shunya water wastage, Shunya disposability issues, Shunya power consumption, and almost Shunya cost. Thank you. There are 21 seconds left on the clock. They've learned their script up well, haven't they? Absolutely. So, you know, zinc oxide nanoparticles have been known in the literature for a while, right? Uh, for their photocatalytic effect. And, and some of the uh, triethylene tetraamine work that you've shown is also known in the literature. So, uh, how is this different from what is already there? So, zinc oxide nanoparticle and triethylene tetraamine are just two discoveries. First of all, I have merged them via a chitosan moiety that also renders a hydroxyl group apart from joining these two. And the most important thing, the soporolipid, which acts as a size limiting agent, which limits the size of zeta to 4.53 nanometers in width, which it can beat any other nano remediation agent in terms of the adsorption potential. So, uh, do you have anything to do with odor also? Uh, yes, it rem removes the odor. The, uh, there's no, it's a pleasant taste of water. The TSS, the total suspended solids, the total mm. dissolved solids, heavy metals, dyes, pesticides, beta lactams. And the it's, it's like almost everything is removed. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, it, you know, uh, one of the stages uh, which is there in, uh, say, UV water filters is that anything which passes over the UV kills yes. organic matter hundred percent. Yeah, that's why I'm comparing the existing system of Zeta with an RO UV system. RO comes nowadays with UV system along with it. So whatever the disinfection done by UV, the germicidal act of action of UV is similar to that of Zeta. Zeta just enters the cell owing to the small size of 4.5 nanometer, damages the cell organelles. We have confirmed using transmission electron microscopy and reduces the CFU. Do you have comparative results of, yes, from sir. a third party certified body? Yes, sir. We have compared it with several uh, water pollution board in Velour and we have compared our results to the RO based plant and the RO UV. I think it's a damn neat idea to look at your business as a B2B. With respect to that, I have a couple of questions. Uh, possibly Pushkin, you can answer them. Um, one, we said our, purify, our cartridge is lower cost. Give me a comparison. Uh, Ma'am, for the domestic uh, segment, we can sell our cartridge at a price of 350 rupees, whereas today what is available in the market would be at around 1,400 rupees. Okay. And for the industrial segment, we will be selling it at about 20,000 rupees, and what's available today is at 1.5 lakh rupees. Wow. And uh, what is the uh, you know durability? How long will? 1.5 to two years, ma'am. And the existing ones? Uh, the existing ones would be between one to 1.5 years. Okay. Have you thought of a marketing strategy? For, have you got a database of all the purifiers across the country? Uh, yes, ma'am. We and what's the acquisition strategy? Have you thought of uh, um, how you're going to approach these people? Ma'am, it would be again a B2B model where we have uh, demos. Where the, uh, the USP of the product would be only when it is shown to the uh, consumer, to the uh, customer for us. So when we have a demo, then it will Wait, be... How are you planning to do the demo? I hope you guys are not looking at a physical format of uh, you know, fixing an appointment with a textile manufacturer, for instance, doing the demo. I think this is the time to start looking at using technology. Brilliant product. I don't want it get ruined by a bad marketing strategy. Okay, this is where I'm saying, and Devlina, this is also to you, because you come across to me not just as a lab rat. There is a certain awareness that I see in your whole demeanor. You need to supervise. You need to stop wearing only the innovator hat and wear the marketeer's hat as well, just so that your product reaches, you know, is meant for the larger good. Okay. Sure, ma'am. Well, if you thought that you could filter everything out with your product, you hadn't met our judges, yeah? They can really squeeze everything out, can't they? Well, now I'm going to leave them to Mark. 
Uh, five parameters, of course, disruption, relevance, reach and commercial viability of the product, the use of science, of course, and most importantly, the Shunya proposition. So let's uh, go to our judges now and see whether this team has gone beyond 204, whether they're on top of our leaderboard because the top two teams at the end of uh, the series are the ones who are going to fight in the grand finale. Judges, have you reached a decision? Yeah. You know? okay. This was one of the easiest decisions to oh, reach. Fantastic. You know, all you had to do was good, 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 good. <laughs> That's very good. Good news for you guys. Which is exactly smiling. what I did. I've marked good on all the parameters for you and you've got 80 out of 100. Whoa! Okay. Okay. Nandini, that's the that's the highest score highest we've got from you. It, yes. Wow. Omi, do you agree? Or did you find some holes in what they were saying? Mm. Uh, I thought it was a very good presentation. I think there's a lot of uh, value in the product. You have a lot of potential. Don't mess it up. Uh, it's a good thing. Uh, it has the opportunity to make a difference in people's lives. Uh, my score was 88. Whoa, 88! You know, you know that these things are very rare. We've got me saying things like "whoa," <laughs> not even a word. Rajiv, kya aapne inke armano pe pani phera? No, even uh, from me, this team has got the highest so far. Uh, but uh, you know, there's always a difference between mine and uh, you know the. the That's because you are Professor Kaflav. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got 72 uh, from me, which is the highest uh, I've given to any team uh, so far. That and means that Devlina and Pushkin, 204 is what you needed to beat. You're smiling because you know that that was a cakewalk for you. 240, right on top of the leaderboard. Well done. On that note, we're going to take a short little break. I need to talk to the judges. I don't know what's happened to them. They're all hard today. What's going on with you guys? <laughs> we're going to take a short break and come right back when DuPont presents the Power of Shunya Challenge for Zero. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hello and welcome to DuPont Presents The Power of Shunya Challenge for Zero. We've had one team of innovators in today's challenge. And boy, what a team they've been. Their scores reflected that. Our judges gave them 240 out of a possible 300. It's the highest score that we've had in the series so far, which is why they are sitting on top of the leaderboard. But hey, we're not done yet because we have another team that's coming out today. Can they dazzle as much? Can they dazzle enough to be second on the leaderboard? Or will they not make a dent at all? We'll only find out after we hear their idea. But first, let's bring them out from the Jaya Engineering College in Chennai, B. Madan Kumar, and from Symbiosis Institute of Management Studies, Pune, Karan Singh Rajput. Karan and Madan, how are you? Excited. Madan, you are reverse aging, I know. You figured it out. Are you cryogenically freezing yourself at night? How, how, how old are you? I'm 20 years old. So. You're 20? Yeah. This is not fair. How, why do we not like look 10 years younger than we are? It's just not fair at all. Actually, I'm also 52, by the way, so yeah. <laughs> you've got it sorted. Not to worry. He's very shy right now, but he'll smile a little more after we all see what his innovation is about. They're talking about the paper plane UAV. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Paper plane unmanned aerial vehicle. Excellent. Let's have a look at that first and then we'll hear from both of them. My innovation is a paper plane unmanned aerial vehicle. It is an avionic system which is fixed inside the paper plane. In my paper plane, I have installed a receiver circuit and a thermal sensor or even a Bluetooth enabled camera. Okay. 
in that i have made up uh, lithium phosphate fuel cell so it is uh, completely economic friendly and i have uh, used a tail rotor which for uh, clockwise direction it will turn right and for anti clockwise direction it will turn left this is called mass piloting system the impact of this innovation i have designed it for uh, the close combat operations in defense sector so for that uh, reconnaissance and uh, defense purposes only i have designed this kind of paper plane model it can save the precious life of soldiers it is biodegradable just it is only made up of paper so that it is biodegradable and it is made up of lithium phosphate fuel cells so that uh, it doesn't make any emissions like uh, other uh, airplanes the avionic system used doesn't produce any sound so that it is totally noise free and uh, we can implement it in any areas so it is portable now i have used a radio controlled stick to control my vapor plane so i am trying to uh, design it as a self steerable thing by uh, by means of embedded system so in future the paper plane will be dropped just like that and it will uh, steer itself to survey that uh, those areas and transmit the data I'm actually feeling a little bad if only my teachers are not scolded me about making paper planes i could have come up with something as well right <laughs> was not to be you've done it madan good job looks interesting our judges are going to quiz you about the science of it in a second but karan we're going to come to you now uh, you have 90 seconds to impress us with your pitch are you ready yes sir all right my friend 90 seconds start now all right uh, india has 15000 kilometers of its borders the trouble is that indian uh, defense forces they cannot survey it all the time and even those areas which they can survey they are very dangerous and hence uh we need something which is aerially uh, serving that and it will result in less casualties uh so there is a need of that and uh, uh based on that my target market will be uh, the defense forces primarily and the secondary target market will be go the government of india institutions like uh, the forest department and the archaeological survey uh what they can do is that the forest department they will uh, uh, uh find out the poachers if they are in the forest and archaeological survey they can uh, see the buildings uh, the historical buildings from outside and see if there is any structural damage uh, now uh, the price of this product will be 1000 rupees uh, the co construction cost after the uh, uh, after the mass production will also go down and hence uh, the product will be even lesser than that uh, the benefits of that to the defense forces will be that uh, it is very portable uh, it is easier easier to manufacture on the battlefield and it will uh, uh, be easily maneuverable in the battlefield also uh, the benefit after the benefit the main uh, application of this will be uh, uh, in the battlefield with uh, enemy reconnaissance uh, to see, to view where the enemies Ten are seconds. and uh, hence this will be a very good pro uh, product because of power of shunya was uh, application towards it Judges are going to decide whether you're going to have a smooth takeoff or you're going to crash land. Judges, over to you. <laughs> so what this reminds me really of is uh, what India is starting to be known for frugal engineering, right? Uh, and and the ability to do functions very inexpensively. Yes, so it, it, it's a great great example of of that. And I guess it's disposable and bio-friendly and all, I mean eco-friendly and all of that as well, right? Yes, sir. The total structure is eco-friendly, sir, because it, it doesn't make any uh, uh, pollution, like noise pollution, or right. it doesn't have any exhaust. Right. We are using fuel cells, so that uh, there is no any. I, uh, I would have just liked to see it fly somewhere. <laughs> yes, I didn't get that chance to see that, but uh, maybe we can we can talk also about that. Also, retrieval, later. I guess. If you're talking about defense, then what about retrieval? You don't need to retrieve it. No, even if it gets lost, it's possible. Because the yeah. camera feed is only to his Bluetooth. Yeah. so it doesn't yeah. really matter okay. uh what happens if i like in in afghanistan yes, it's sir. plain land right okay. there are no mountains there are no elevations how do i fly this then ma'am uh, in the second phase the future plan is that uh, we'll have a uh, rifle a propulsion uh, uh, vehicle which will launch this uh, plane uh, to a certain altitude and from there we can survey it and then again it can fly from there even like a catapult almost kind of right? yeah. exactly even we can drop it from uh, uh, helium balloons helium powered balloons right. from uh, from the particular altitude so that it will work so uh, if i am a soldier serving in a war zone uh, all yes. i need is a notebook in my backpack and some of the circuits yes. right yes, that's all and i can make them i can fly them for recce 
I can get the data and I don't have to risk my life. That's what your product uh, yes, does. Absolutely. One suggestion I have, make it a controlled defense product because you don't want lumpen elements using it for stalking celebrities. Mm. That is a distinct possibility. Ah. So keep it as a controlled defense product. So a couple of questions. Yeah. So if it is in the air, it needs to be controlled. Yes, sir. What is the range of your remote control? Uh, the remote control is 2.4 gigahertz controller, sir. It can control up to 500 meters. Up to 500 meters. Yes. What is the power of the camera, megapixel? Uh, it is 0.3 uh, megapixel. It's a VGA camera. Pinhole camera. So VGA camera has very poor visibility. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, then uh, in terms of the material itself, uh, it's paper. So if it is raining, it will quickly, you know, get wet and fall down. Sir, but uh, A4 sheet of 800 JSM, I have using 800 JSM paper. It will resemble similar to aluminium. Now, recently, scientists have used in space planes also. They have dropped from near space uh, altitude and they have searched for those planes. Uh, uh, it will uh, work sufficiently. So that, uh, uh, so for that only, I have using that, that, that paper. It is uh, 800 JSM paper. So. Aluminium and this paper uh, okay. are almost so good. So maybe there are ways to yeah. put a wax yeah. Yeah, coating or something. Yeah. yeah. Last point. So the Bluetooth transfer of what the camera sees is what distance? Yeah. Now, uh, now it was designed for up to 50 feet, sir. So up it to is 50 a prototype. Feet. Yes, sir. We can also increase the megapixel of the cam. I have used only the uh, pinhole camera, so we can increase the megapixels of the camera yeah. and. We can use Wi-Fi for transmitting uh, while uh, designing the re real product. Uh, we, we, it will be more efficient than this plane, sir. So we can able to cover a long range. Yeah. So, so basically, my idea of asking you these questions was that uh, innovation has tremendous potential, but clearly there is some distance which you have to travel in terms of you know making it more robust and useful for the purposes which you are talking about. Well, so we're going to let our judges do the marking now. Judges, do we have your scores? Rajiv, start with you. Overall, uh, uh, they've got 64 out of 100 from me. And uh, the highest they've got from me is on the commercial viability. And uh, all other scores are on average. Clearly, for me, there is a lot of distance which you have to travel from, you know, prototype or the initial stage to the commercialization stage. So work on that very fast. You can't take off from the aero bridge, according yeah, to you, yeah? yeah? yeah You're going yeah. to be on the runway. Yes. Um, for me, this is a product very close to my heart because we mentor entrepreneurs in the war zones. This is probably in the last eight to ten years that I have you know, been with entrepreneurs. This is seriously a game-changing product that I have come across. Yes, you have a long way to go to develop it, but in the prototype phase as a concept, do I see potential? Absolutely game-changing potential. So I've given you 92. 23 on 25, 92. Wow. On. The whole idea of uh, making, uh, doing something very inexpensively is a great way to go. Uh, my scores was 72. You needed lesser than that from Homie to go over 204. You've landed very smoothly at 228 which places you second on our leaderboard in the series. Good job, guys. But we're going to call the episode winners out because they got 240. That's what they got out of a possible 300. So please, let's bring out Devlina and Pushkin, our winners for today's episode. Please bring them out with a round of applause. Ajit, if you could, please. Yeah. Come on, guys, come out. Don't be shy. Congratulations, Pushkin. Thank you. Select the tablet from Rajiv. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Well, our jury is used to bowling bouncers, but today with 240 and 228, it was like a T20 match on a flat wicket, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, just yeah. totally high scoring. 
I think the bounces still came. It was probably the quality of the batting that was top draw. Well, let's see if these are the two teams that meet in the grand finale. We don't know. We still have a lot more innovations to see. But that's going to happen in our next episode. Thank you so much for watching. This was DuPont Presents The Power of Junior Challenge for Zero. We'll see you next time with more teams and more innovations. Goodbye. Thanks for watching.